everybody. I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty, where we come together to share great info on skincare, makeup, and healthy living, all designed to help make our second half our best half. And I'm so happy to have you here with me today for video number three in my series, A Slim You in 22. And I will say that this is a diet and weight loss video. I am a beauty YouTuber. I am up in my 60s, I will say. And I hope you'll stick around to the end of this video because I have some fantastic jewelry items from Amazon that are super reasonable in price. And if you're not a subscriber and you're interested in all things that help us look and feel our best in our second half, then I hope you'll subscribe, click the notification bell, and give this video a thumbs up. I am so excited to share this with you. And basically in this video, I'm going to be sharing information about what I have done to basically overcome an overeating disorder I had pretty much my whole life that was addictive eating. And to look at me, you would think, oh, Beth, she's probably always been thin. And I'm going to show you this picture in every single video. It's me eight months pregnant, but it is me when I was 25 years old eating the way I wanted to eat. I know some of you who've been here for the other videos, you've seen that already. But for those of you who are new here, I just want you to know, I may look like this slender person that never had a care in the world with regard to my eating, but that is not the case at all. And I just really want to help people with my experience. I have been through the ringer in my past. I've been on every diet about known to man, but the important thing is that over all those years and lots and lots of research, I have found the Holy Grail. Whoa! Actually, I really have. I just see so many people walking around in the society our food manufacturers here in this country, they do everything they can to get us addicted to food and they do a great job of it. And it is so funny. My sister says, well, there are a lot of overweight people and I think a lot of people don't care. They, they don't mind being overweight at all. And I totally disagree with that. And of course, everybody is beautiful. Anyone can be beautiful at any shape or size. But I think there is a lot of pain out there. And I did a first video on this in early December of last year. And I got like 2,000 comments on that video and 400,000 views, something like that. And those comments were filled with a lot of pain. A lot of people saying, gosh darn it, I am 30 pounds overweight. I fought this my whole life. The hunger monster has got me. And I did a video early in my channel about how I overcame the hunger monster. And I don't know if it's there or there, but you might want to take a look at that. And I'm going to link the first video that I did in December again because that tells you more about my story with the hunger monster and with addictive eating. Okay, I have a lot to cover with you today and I hope you go back to the first video which was quitting sugar for 30 days, a 30 day challenge. And it is not just really 30 days. I am maybe 35 days on quitting sugar entirely. And it was rough the first few days. And in this video, wherever it is, you'll be able to see my first seven days of that journey. And it was right before Christmas. I started on this no sugar thing like December 22nd. And it is now the 30th of January. The first week, I'm not going to lie. It was really, really hard. But ever since that first week, every day I've been feeling better. I am feeling happy and healthy and just quite a bit better than I've really ever felt in my life. Because since I discovered the low carb lifestyle and I did become slender, I lost probably 15 pounds maybe a couple of years ago. And ever since that time, I could cheat and eat a candy bar here and there and have some sugary treats. But I realized that it fueled my addictive feelings toward food. I didn't like it. I just don't like that feeling that a bag of chips or that pint of ice cream or even Cool Whip in the freezer is calling my name and that I can't successfully overcome that. And when I stay eating in the low carb lifestyle that I'm going to share with you, I don't have food cravings. I don't have to count calories. I can eat as much as I want of low carb foods. I just don't have the hunger that I had pretty much my whole life. First, I will say I'm not a doctor, so do consult with your physician anytime you're going to change your diet. However, I will have to say that if you're a pretty healthy person and your doctor okays you on this, if you go on my eating plan, you will lose weight, you will lose the hunger that you've had perhaps your whole life, just as I did, and you will feel better than ever. Okay, let me get into the information in this third video. And again, going back, the first video in this series is a no sugar for 30 day challenge. The second video, which I just aired, I think last week, is the great sugar clean out, 
where I cleaned out my kitchen of sugar, flour, and artificial sweeteners. And you'll learn in that first video why it's necessary to also get rid of flours and artificial sweeteners in addition to sugar. So please go back to that earlier video. And in this video, I'm going to be showing you my eating plan that I follow. It is basically a low carb eating plan. And when I stick to that diet, that, that way of eating, I do not have cravings. I really don't have to control portions as long as I stick with my low carb foods. And I will say, I'm going to tell you about two different low carb eating plans. The first is the keto plan, which is the lowest carb plan. And I really wish I could be on keto, but unfortunately I have some IBS issues with my digestive system that I really can't follow the keto. I've learned it is too high fat for me and there is dairy in keto and I just can't have dairy or too high fat. So I have switched to the paleo diet, which is the way our ancestors supposedly used to eat. It is not as low carb as the keto. It is not as high fat as the keto, but for me, it does work very well. Let me preface all this by saying that if you feel like you have an addictive relationship with food, if when confronted with one cookie, you know, the whole bag of cookies, like a whole bag of Oreos, and somebody says just eat one and then nobody else is in the room, you might have an addictive eating problem as I do if you sneak five cookies, 10 cookies, 15 cookies, that kind of thing. And also people like us, you know, it's hard for us just to have a handful of chips. We want to eat half the bag. So if you have that kind of eating problem, then this low carb lifestyle in both of these eating plans really may be right for you. Okay, I'm going to tell you about the keto and the paleo, but first I want to tell you one more thing. And that is that after years of researching this, and believe me, I had such problems with eating that I researched this over the years, but basically I believe there are two camps of people, those who are basically non-addicted to food and those who are highly addicted to food. And basically in those who are not addicted to food, they are born with adequate levels of serotonin and dopamine. Serotonin is the feel good, I'm happy chemical, I'm not depressed, serotonin is high, you feel great. And dopamine is the, I'm included in the group, I feel like one of everything. I just feel happy, people like me, I like them. So serotonin and dopamine are very nice to have for our happiness. I believe that certain people, a certain maybe 50% of people are born with adequate levels of serotonin and dopamine. They just feel pretty good and they're not addicted to things for the most part. Well, the other 50% of us are born with very low levels of serotonin and very low levels of dopamine. So we tend to go through life feeling kind of depressed, feeling things could maybe be better, and that's our low serotonin. And the low dopamine makes us feel like we're always on the outside looking in, like we really don't fit in with a group. It's just a terrible thing. And I tell you this because sugars and processed carbs, in fact, any kind of carbs, they pump up our levels of serotonin and dopamine. So you could even eat rice or bread or certainly an ice cream cone, but within just a few minutes of eating that ice cream cone, you are kind of on top of the world. Your levels of serotonin and dopamine are just making you feel really good. You're just kind of at one with the world. And the problem is that if I'm talking about you right there, that is great and that works for about an hour and then you hit the slump and then you really need to have more sugar or processed carbs to get that high again and it becomes this vicious cycle. And I'm going to link some videos down below to some doctors talking about all of this. Okay, let me get into your next assignment should you choose to go along with me. And if you've been following the videos in this series, you're already off the sugar, the flowers, and the artificial sweeteners. Now we're going to go low carb in general. We're going to take it really low carb. And you can do that through either the keto diet or the paleo, like I mentioned. So let me go ahead and tell you some basics about the keto diet. And I put a link to an interview that I had with Dr. Ken Berg, who is the keto expert, the keto guru on YouTube. And that is a very interesting video because he talks about the health benefits of the keto diet. And I did used to do the keto, but again, it did not work with my digestive issues. And I've got a little cheat sheet here because I want to make sure that I, that I tell you this accurately. And basically on the keto diet, you will be switching to a low carb diet that is so low in carbs that it causes your body to switch to burning your own fat. They call that ketosis when your body is in that. And that is not to be confused with a diabetic coma type thing. It is ketosis when you have very low carbs. And in a female, that is 50 grams of carbohydrate per day or less generally. And in a male, it's 60 grams or less of carbohydrate. 
And again, consult with your doctor because with the keto especially, if you have a history of kidney disease, if you're pregnant, if you're nursing, if you have any other type of eating disorders, keto may not be for you. But here are some foods that you can eat on the keto diet. You can have all manner of meats, fatty meats included, things like red meat, steak, ham, sausage, bacon, chicken, and turkey. You can have all manner of seafood, including fatty fish, like salmon and mackerel. I don't think I've ever eaten mackerel, but you get the general idea. You can have all types of eggs and also dairy foods of all types. You can have heavy cream. You can have half and half in your coffee. You can have cheese of all types, any kind of dairy. One thing I really like about the keto diet is I can have my wonderful blue cheese salad dressing, which I love, and I always have extra dressing, so on the keto, that's really nice. You can also have all manner of nuts and seeds, any type of nuts and seeds. You can have all sorts of healthy oils. That is things like olive oil and avocado oil. You can have a full range of low carbohydrate vegetables. Anything in vegetables that isn't potatoes, pretty much. Green veggies, salad veggies, tomatoes, green peppers, even avocados. And you can have the normal condiments. Actually, in paleo and keto, you can have the normal condiments, salt, pepper, herbs, and spices. Now, the things that you have to avoid on keto are all manner of sugary foods. Things like soda, fruit juice, smoothies, cake, ice cream, candies, etc. Also sugary sauces like barbecue sauce, honey mustard, ketchup, that kind of thing. And as you'll remember, if you saw video two of this series, in terms of sugar in those condiments, those types of things, sugar is usually very prevalent in those things. And what you do is that you look at the label and if sugar, any type of sugar, is in the top three ingredients, you don't eat that. On the keto diet, you're also going to avoid grains and starches of any type. That's all kinds of grains, including oatmeal, wheat bran, wheat, any kind of grains. And that's why we went off flour in video one to kind of get us used to getting rid of those grains. You're also going to avoid all types of bread, rice, pasta, cereal, etc. And under this video, there's a link to a keto intro diet with all of the foods you can and can't have. And there's also one for the paleo diet down there. And on the keto diet, you're going to avoid all types of fruit except for very low glycemic fruits like berries, blueberries, that kind of thing. And I think strawberries, you can eat those as well on the keto in limited portions. You're going to avoid beans and legumes of all types peas, kidney beans, lentils, chickpeas, etc. You're also going to avoid potatoes and root vegetables of all types, things like white potatoes, sweet potatoes, carrots, parsnips, etc. You're also going to avoid unhealthy fats, things like processed vegetable oils, like canola oil. I can't believe people still eat canola oil, mayonnaise, that kind of thing. No alcohol on the keto diet. That's beer, wine, liquor, mixed drinks. I'm lucky because I quit drinking 22 years ago, so that was not a problem for me. And also you're going to avoid prepared sugar-free diet foods like sugar-free candies, syrups, pudding, sweeteners, desserts, etc. Okay, that was the keto diet. And I was on that for several years and I continued to have IBS type problems. And my IBS is getting a lot better on the paleo diet. And this is a little easier diet for you if you really don't want to cut carbs that low. However, I will tell you that if you have huge food cravings, it is best to go on the keto because that will just cut them off at the knees. You won't really crave food on the keto at all. And on the paleo, I really don't find that I crave foods because I've been on it a while. But it kind of depends where you are in terms of your food cravings. If you have intense cravings, you probably should start with the keto instead of the paleo because the paleo is not as low carb. It's a little less restrictive. And I'll tell you what you can eat on the paleo diet. You can have meats, beef, lamb, chicken, turkey, pork, and others. And some paleo diets say to emphasize the low fat meats. In the keto, they say bring on the fat. In fact, you know, you can put butter on your steaks in the keto and butter on your chicken breasts. I did that all the time and it was beautiful. Well, I loved it. You can also have fish and seafood of any type. You can have eggs on the paleo diet, but no cheese, no cheese, no milk, that kind of thing. It's really not those dairy products, but you can have eggs. It's vegetables of all types on the paleo, and you can even have white potatoes and sweet potatoes on the paleo, which is something that you're not supposed to have on the keto. You can have fruits of pretty much any type on the paleo diet. And I have to say, since I switched to the paleo, I really am enjoying eating fruit again. Also on the paleo, you can have nuts and seeds of any type. However, if you're really going into it for weight loss, you probably better watch that a little bit. And you can also have healthy fats and oils like extra virgin olive oil, avocado oil, and other healthy oils. 
Now the foods to avoid on the paleo diet are all grains, things like oatmeal, rice, that kind of thing. It includes breads and pastas, wheat, spelt, rye, barley, etc., whatever spelt is. It includes beans. You really should not have beans of any type on the paleo diet. In terms of dairy, as I mentioned before, you can have eggs, but all other dairy is off the table, so no cheese, no butter, that kind of thing. Now, if you're strict paleo, you're also avoiding most dairy. You can have the eggs, like I mentioned before, but you're generally not supposed to have cheese or butter, that kind of thing. However, I have always done paleo where I have allowed myself butter and it works just fine for me. And you should be avoiding some vegetable oils, things like soybean oil, sunflower oil, cottonseed oil, corn oil, grapeseed oil, safflower oil, and others. Just stick to the olive oil and the avocado oil. Well, that is enough for this video today. I hope you're involved with your no sugar challenge. I certainly am, and it has been wonderful for me. If you could leave a comment about where you are in this program, I would really appreciate that. And also, if you think you're going to go ahead with the paleo or the keto diet, then I hope you'll list that in the comment section below the video. And again, if you're interested in seeing more of the Slim You in 22 series, I hope you'll subscribe, click that little bell, and or give this video a thumbs up. And earlier in the video, I did promise that I'd show you the jewelry that I have on. And these earrings are linked below. They're from Nordstrom, and I really do like them. They remind me of like 80s or 90s bling. And I just got them about a month ago. I really like them. And then here is a little gold ring that I got from Amazon, which is really luxe looking. I think it's absolutely beautiful, and it looks more expensive than it is. And this is very inexpensive. And it is in the style of David Yurman. And I know because I used to sell David Yurman jewelry on eBay. In fact, I have a ton of it. And if you'd like to see a, a video about my David Yurman jewelry and my new fakes I'm finding, I would love to share that with you. So just ask me in the comment section. And last, I have this very blingy watch, which I really like. I hope you can see that. And that is available on Amazon. It is just very heavy and gold and very ornate looking. It is really my style and it's a bargain on Amazon. I really thought it was. And right now, I hope you continue watching some of my fitness related videos. Take care and I'll see you in my next video.